The Campanile was built in 1929 for $75,000, built by Charles Coughlin, who was an official, an engineer for Briggs and Stratton. When it was built, you know, that was before the Mount Rushmore, so it was kind of a tourist attraction for a few years. Most people had never flown in an airplane or probably the highest they'd ever been was at the top of the windmill on their farm or in a three-story building. So kids got a kick out of climbing to the top and really getting a, a view of the area. built, most people didn't have wristwatches. They needed something to know when the classes started. The clarions uh, were used to alert students when they should be in class. The Campanile, I pronounce it. Another pronunciation is Campanile, and both are correct, whichever you want to use. I'm not a mathematician or an engineer, but how did they start at the bottom of the bricks and lay them all so that they taper into the top portion of the Campanile, and how did it all come out even? I mean, you, you, it'd be easy to make a taper on one wall, but then they had to make a taper on all four walls, and they had to match up at the top, and uh, to me that's, that's kind of an interesting mathematical problem that I have no idea how, how they did it, and it was built quite rapidly, maybe six months, and uh, today that'd probably take a year or so to build that thing and it probably cost you several million dollars. Definitely it would be uh, here when many buildings are gone. It's a, an icon for the university. It brings us all together. If you were graduates of the university, you and I would have something in common. We'd all remember the Campanile.